Morning, everyone. Right. I've got two readings today. First one is Corinthians chapter 12, 1 to 7. And it's on page 1153 of the Bible. Now, about spiritual gifts, brother, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were, you were paying, somehow or other, you were influenced and was led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, there are different ha gifts. There are same gifts, same spirit. There are kinds of spirit, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but the same God working all of them in all men. Now, to each one, the manifest of the Spirit is given for the common good. This is the, the here ends of the first reading. Next reading is Matthew. Twenty five. Starting at verse 34. Then the king shall say to those on his right, Come, and you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I, for I was hungry, and you, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needed clothes to close you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of these, the least of my brothers, of my brothers of mine, you did for me. Here enters the second reading. Thanks be to God. Um, some of you will have been in Tidy Church several months ago now, Thelma, wasn't it? Um, <clears throat> and God gave me a very clear picture. And um, we thought we'd just sort of mention that because it ties in with Thelma's talk this morning. Um, it was a picture of a canal boat and it was, it was in, um, in the lock and doors closed behind it and it was waiting to go up. So obviously the water had to come in <laughs> to lift it up. And um, I felt very clearly that um, to let that water in, something had to be done, obviously, and usually it's that key thing that lets it all in. Um, but I just felt God clearly say that somebody has just forgotten the next step. So it wasn't sinful, they had just forgotten the next step. And when they kind of gave that to God, the floodgates would open and out could go the boat. And um, the next morning, Thelma came in and said, that was for me. So she's going to share her story. Thank you. 
Father God, we want to bring our beautiful sister to you, Thelma, this morning. And Father, we just ask that uh, as she shares with us this morning, that it will touch each of our hearts, but not only touch our hearts, but just to remind us that sometimes we also need to do a something to follow in your way. And uh, yeah, we just lift this morning and just lift Thelma up to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Well, I, I gave my testimony some weeks ago, but, you know, just briefly. And today, um, I just want to also follow up, you know. I just want us to just walk together to see what God is doing in our midst and also to encourage one another and, um, you know, to do what God has called us to do. So today, just to tie in with the testimony, which will come a little later, I just want to um, just set the scripture a little, but the thing is that I want you to, some of you don't know that I am a teacher in the Lord, so please bear with me. I'm just trying to exercise my gift, and that is what today is all about, our giftings. So I haven't given it a, um, a topic, but it's all about our giftings. So today, um, the, sec- the first reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting from verse 1 to 7, we found that if we look at around verse 4, I want, us, I want to show us something. It says here, there are diversity of gifts. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Take note of diversity of uh, gifts and take note of the spirit. I said, there are different of ministry. There are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. Take note of ministry, take note of the Lord. And there are diversity of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Activities, God. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Underline profit of all. I'll come back to that. So the, what the Bible is trying to teach us today is that God has given us gifts. God has given every one of us gifts. Now, if we check the Bible, you know, if we search the Bible, we find out that there are three different types of gifts. God has, there's a gift that from what we have read from verse four now, there's a gift of, uh, from the Holy Spirit, and that is called manifestational gift. And also there's another gift. Okay, so that gift, <clears throat> you can find that gift. If you read down this passage further down to, from seven to 10, you find all the nine gifts that is given to us. One is the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, number two. Number three is faith. Number four is gifts of healings. Number five is working of miracles. Number six is prophecy. Number seven, discovering of, of um, designing of spirits. Then number eight is different kinds of tongues. And number nine is interpretation of tongues. That's, they are all different gifts. And you can find them all here in the church. Then if you go further, the second type of gift is the ministry gift. And that is the gift that Jesus gave us. That one you can find in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 to 11. You don't need to turn to it. Now, in that gift, Jesus gave us that gift for the church. He wants to build his church up. If you, read, if you go home and read it, you find that he wants to build the church up. So he supports us with um, these people, like Glenn and the leaders in the church and all that. These are the people, the gifts God, Jesus gave to us. And these gifts, there are five of them. And uh, the first one is apostle. In no particular order, I just wrote, it down, wrote them down. The second one is prophet. The third one is evangelist. The fourth one is reverend or pastor. And then the 
fifth one is teacher. This one is also found in the church. But there's one gift that, uh, that God gave everyone, uh, gave us, and that is called motivational gift. All these three gifts, you can find them in this small verse of the Bible, um, uh, First Corinth, uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 12, 4 to, 4 to 7. You find them all there. So this motivational gift is a gift from God. You see, this gift, God is not a respecter of persons. He does not give only to his children, the ones who have accepted his son, Jesus Christ. No, he gave this gift to every one of us. Everyone, believers, unbelievers, we all have a gift. I read out this gift. And there are seven gifts that God gave us. The first one is is a a perceiver, two is server, three is teacher. So God also gave us teacher as well. Four is exalter, five is giver, six is administrator, and seven is uh, compassionate, compassionate person. So these are the gifts you can find. So that means we all have a gift. However, we look at it. Some people will say, I don't know what my gifts and giftings are, but you, you just look into your life, pray about it, and ask God, to, and God will direct you into your gifting. And I trust, trust me, when we do what God has called us to do, we find happiness, fulfillment in them. God never owes anyone. He never owes anyone at all. As you are working for him, he is also working for you. And then he say, sometimes you look at people and you say, why is this person always doing this? He never does that. That's because that's the gifting of that person. And so that will help us with our children as well. You see, this topic I'm, looking, I'm just browsing through, it's a huge topic, but I just want to do it under 10 minutes, you know, so don't worry about it, I'm not gonna go in depth. So that is also how we uh, parents see their children from when they are babies. What toys do they like, uh, do they like playing with? Um, uh, what, why is this child very emotional, every little thing? Um, you know, just ask questions and then you find out that if you look at it pre- uh, properly, okay, for example, a child likes, he sees a chair and he uses a blade to cut it. Yes, you get angry. Why are you spoiling my furniture? Yeah, but that child is learning, trying to find out what is in that thing, how did they make it? And who thinks like that? Who thinks like that? Engineers, you see? Who did that? So from there, you know that this child, mm, okay, I'm gonna try and replace that chair, but <laughs> you're going to, <laughs> you are going to, this is now where I'm going through. I'm going to give you what you, the toy that you can play with all your life, so you're going to become an engineer. You know, so, and then, you know, some cold little, little ones, you know, maybe sometimes girls, sometimes boys, cuddly and all that. And then they will see, um, they see, um, what is the smallest animal I can talk of now? Uh, maybe if an insect dead on the floor, oh, mommy, and they start crying for an insect. Compassionate person. Could be my, my, um, my team call them my team, compassionate people. That's a nurse, I'm a nurse by the way, so that's why I'm saying my team. <laughs> so that could be a nurse, that could be a doctor. I'll tell you a story. My son, when he was um, to, you know, to apply for university, he, his uh, result was very brilliant, you know, he's very, very good. And I said in my little mind, and he's compassionate as well, and I said in my little mind, mm, this child, it should be a doctor. And then I was in everything possible. <laughs> I was in everything possible to get him to be a doctor. I sent him to L and I had um, in my team, there's this nice um, Christian doctor whom I thought he could help him to see what medicine is all about. But, but guess what? When we are watching TV and there's an operating table, and they put a line on somebody's skin and the blood rushes out. 
his lungs. And I said, oh my goodness, how is this person going to be a doctor? <laughs> and then I was coming back from, from work one day. Uh, fortunately, I was coming back just not far from home. And uh, he was with a brother, uh, with a sister. And then my phone rang, and then we're not, we are, we are, there was no law against picking the phone while you're driving, so I picked the phone. I said, Mom, Mom, uh, I really had just caught her, her, her finger. There's blood everywhere. Oh my goodness, I was, oh my goodness, I, was, I just ran and I got home. I said, Where is she? Where is she? And I said, Just a little cut <laughs> and a little trickle of blood. I, I'm sorry, I'm picking on him. He's here. I'm picking on him to this morning. <laughs> and then, and then we, and then we, we, then I said to him, I said, okay, I give up. I don't think this boy is a is a doctor by any means. He's not even a nurse. <laughs> He's not a nurse at all. So I'll leave him. Let him just do what he wants to do. And then he decided he wanted to do engineering. So they called us for uh, this engineering uh, in, uh, in in what is it called? The f in what is? No, we had the interview, so parents had to go with them and everything. So when we got there, after their talks and everything, they took them to the lab. Oh my God, my son, you know, is that busted loose? Oh, that he touched this chemical, he touched that one, he was all over the place. I said, Oh, I was going to mislead this child. <laughs> <laughs> this is where he belongs. Okay, so at the end of the day, yes, he, he did um, chemical engineering in the, in the university. So what am I saying? I'm saying that we are all gifted in different ways. Yes, I'm mom and I'm compassionate, which is he is, but, but he has, because we can have combination of gifts, but the one that is more prominent is the one that you stick with and then you find your happiness there. So having said that, I am a compassionate person by uh, my motivational gift is compassion and and also I'm a teacher like um like I, um, I, I mentioned earlier and then um, Glenn was one was the, the one who told me even though I knew I was a compassionate person but that day that period I was praying to God to lead me I needed I, I need to do something since I came into Christ Church I had sat down. I tried to do something for the Lord. I tried to participate, but each time I want to do that, you know, I don't do it. You know, I have to sit down. I believe the Lord is saying, sit down. Where I came from, I had a lot of, I was really handsome and we are all over the place trying to make sure to grow the church and everything. So I was really, really handsome. But I think I burnt myself out. And the Lord is saying, sit down. And I sat down. I tried to, check, to join the uh, children's ministry. Lee will tell you. I didn't show up one day. You know, they'll put my name on the rotor. I'll forget. I never do that. I'm not, you know, I'm still young. But I'll forget. Okay, I said, okay. I'm going to go to the hospitality department. I showed up once. And then, who, where is the rotor? I don't even know where the rotor is. Yes. <laughs> So I that gave that up and said, at the end of that, I said, you know what, I give up. I'll sit down and let God tell me what he wants me to do. And I was there asking God, what do you want me to do? Years back, God had put in my heart to start an orphanage. So um, I, I did the feasibility report and everything, but I left it there. That was about nine years ago. I left it there. I never went back to it. I was enjoying my nursing because what? I was also caring for people and interacting with um, you know, people. I, I love the elderly a lot, you know, so I work with them a lot. So I was enjoying my job, but the Lord kept going back. The orphanage, the orphanage, the orphanage. So that day, Glenn was the one who saw me and told me after praying, he came to me personally and said to me, that God has called me to the Ministry of Compassion. I told him that I knew. So I knew, I still sat down, I didn't do anything. And so that day, uh, Wendy, we came to church. I wasn't, in the, I wasn't there in the morning, but I came to church. I messaged the uh, message son church, we were upstairs. And then the, the um, 
prophecy came out. I take it as prophecy came to Wendy and I went home and I felt actually she was talking to me. God had given me all I'm looking at, I'm looking at my bank account. For crying out loud, God does not deal with our bank account. God doesn't deal, it's not about what we have or what we don't have. If God calls you to do a thing, God has prepared that thing. He has put things in place for you to achieve that thing. God never owes anyone. Before he created man, he made sure that everything we needed for life and godlyhood for everything is on earth before he created us. He created us last. He made sure all the, now we're discovering buildings because some people said building wasn't created then. Yes, it was created. Everything we needed for this building was created on the first day, uh, on, the, on the, those first one week of creation. But our minds could not comprehend it. But as we go, we begin to discover things. Oh, that. Oh, we can put mortar and this together, and then, oh, we can do bricks. Oh, we can, we can do that. And then I will start, we'll start developing what God had God already created it a long time ago. So, if God has called you to do a thing, you need to find out what your giftings are. And if whatever God had called you to do, it is very paramount that we do those things. Don't look at your finances like me. Don't look at how can I achieve this or not. God has already put people in place to help you to achieve it. So my testimony today is that after I heard that, that um, prophecy from Wendy, I decided, you know what? I think I have, the Israelites said, we have scattered this mountain enough. It's time to move on. I said, I think I have, I have, sat on this thing too much, too, for too long. I think I need to do something about it. And then what also, you know, make it brighter for me was when on my 50th birthday, I had a fall and we all know that and broke my knee. My question was, if I had died, what about my calling? What would have happened to my calling? So no wonder some, some people said that the richest place for gifts was found in the graveyard. So some people actually pass through this world without fulfilling their calling in the Lord and they go with it. So, but what about those people? The Bible said, the First Corinthians uh, 12, uh, I think 7, said that the gifts God has given you and I is not for you, it's for the edification of the church. What about those people that did not benefit from what you are supposed to be, benefit from you? So you see, are we being selfish or are we not being selfish? So I looked at it that way. Now when I heard that confirmation, it's like God has been trying to confirm it over and over and over again. Tell me, is she listening? No, she's not. She's looking at her account. There's no money on my account. So this time around, I said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. So I went to Nigeria, um, I think it was in March, and I came back in April. And uh, I wanted to, sh I want to show you some pictures. They're not very, very pretty. No, no, that's not from the beginning, that's the last part. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, so. So what I have done is that I remortgaged my house, got some money out of it, and then I remember I inherited um, a small apartment in my, from my mother back in Nigeria. A good place to start. So I decided I'm going to start. Now this house is, um, is a twin house. There's another house at the corner there. So the one I inherited is the other one at the corner here. So I'm showing you this one so that you will see how the house looked like before I, what I did in April. The next one. So we started doing the house. I changed the roof and changed the, the um, what is it called, the windows. So this is a building site, so don't, don't worry, it's, not, it's a work in progress. 
So don't look at it there, you know, as far. By the time I finish, I'm going to bring the picture, and I'm sure you will you applaud. So, and then this house is part of the rest of the compound, because that's the way uh, my father built his um, dream house. He's late now. Um, so we all have our different apartments in one compound. So that's the apartment where I inherited. So this house is like um, um, two bedrooms in this one, a living room and um, about two toilets and, uh, and the kitchen there. And at the corner there, there's um, about double room, two double rooms there. So that means like I have four bedrooms to start with. So the next one, please. So yeah, that's the, that's the corner behind this, uh, this place. They are all going to be fenced out or covered and then become, so that means I have like four rooms in that. It's a quite a long um, part of the building, you know. So I'm, tr I'm, going, to, I'm going to fence out the, the, the compound where the greens are and fence it out and then fence out the other one, the other part of it. And then I have a large compound in front at the back where the children can play. So what I've done is that I've decided I will start small and I'm going to start with 12 babies. So this is the this will be the nursery for the for the orphanage. So that's where the babies, all my babies, will be um, will be nurtured until they are of age. And I'll show you where the plants for the bigger ones are. So this is the other side. You remember, the other side is where the greens are, and this is the other end. Well, I did I cut off the. That they, I'm going to cut off the rest of the, the building, and there's a gate on this side, a big gate, sorry, a big gate to drive in. So when I cut off from the rest of the compound, we still have an exit, and it will be very independent. So I changed the little, the front door into, I don't know what kind of mess they make in that place. Look at the, yeah, so, but I'm going to clean it off anyway. So that's um, the beautiful door I kind of chose, kind of quite expensive over there. So I got that one. And then in there, the tiles, I've done the change the tiles because my daddy had um, um, marbles. I wrote, I wrote my mom's name on the floor. Hmm, that's romantic, isn't it? Runs <laughs> nowhere. It's exactly so. So, but I kind of covered it, you know, covered it for now. But what I plan to do is that I'm going to find how they will do it and then put a, my dad's signature, you know, my dad, you know, gift from my dad to my mom, on the on the floor somewhere so that it's not lost. So now that's the corridor, and uh, the two rooms are one. The ones on the left. And then the kitchen is the first one here, and then the toilet and the, and the two toilets, that's under toilet at the corner, and then the bathroom. But um, I'm going to, yeah, that's, that's the first toilet in the living area, living room area. And then the first one, please, yeah. Now, this is the, this is the land, um, I bought for the main site. Um, you, so, so I know some, some, some of you will be very good at figures. I know the size of the land. There is a very large land. Um, the first half is 100 by 100 times three. And that's the same thing here. So Nigel, you should be able to tell us what's, how, how big it is. 100, 100 by 100. So, sorry? 100 feet, 100 meters. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 what, no, no. 100 meters. 100. It's big. It's big, isn't it? All I know is it's big. <laughs> I showed it to a friend of mine. He said, Wow, it's a big land. I said, yes, it's a big land. I agreed. <laughs> One of my cousins, my brother actually said to me, tell me you bought the whole street. Wow, can you imagine tell me buying the whole of uh, Old Bedford Road? Yeah. Anyway, it's going to be for the, that's where the, the, um, the main orphanage will be for the older ones. So here, I'm planning that we have, um, 
we have, of course, the living area and all that. And of course, our little church will be by the side because I don't see how we raise those children now without you know, going to church. Be by the side, which we are going to build into the building, but facing out so people, other people can come and worship with them. And then we, um, I also plan for those children who don't have the brain to go to school. They can learn something. So we we'll have things like hairdressing, uh, salon for teaching them, sewing things, you know, for teaching them, and uh, carpentry, you know, for for the bigger ones. And then my plan is that when they have learned those things, you can't just push them away and say, okay, well done, now you can go and start. They don't have the money. So I'm going to try and make it in such a way that people can sponsor them and help them set up. It doesn't really cost much to help them set up. Help them set up and then that one, if they want to come back and bless the orphanage, if they don't want to come back, as so long as they are fine, we are happy with that. So that is my, that is the plan I have. And the, the orphans, I, I, I think I will, I'll, uh, let me explain that the, when we, I use the word orphanage, it will embrace orphanages, orphan, orphans and those children from a very poor background that cannot feed or nobody to help them, I'll take them on. If their parents are happy to bring them in, I'll go through the checks and I can take them on and help them. If it's possible to help them while they're living with their parents, fine. It depends on what they want. So that is the plan. And also I'm planning to have a food bank as well because honestly, the inspiration came when, when um, I went to Nigeria in um, 2009. And, uh, oops, and um, I went with my children. And so we, I decided that we should drive from Lagos to my hometown, which is about six hours drive. So my, as we packed, there was some fruits. There are so many fruits I have not, I have not eaten for a long time. So anywhere I see a collection of people selling fruits, I said, stop the car. I need to buy the fruits. And so I was picking all the fruits as we went. And then, I was, and then, then we stopped in one place. And this little boy, I don't know if my son will remember him. I don't remember. He was carrying this um, tray on his head with one some rotten banana in it. So he was just trying to get people to buy the banana. And my children, I can't remember which one of them said, but mom, what's he doing? I said, uh, if that child doesn't sell that banana, which I know that nobody will buy, he doesn't have lunch. That is lunch money. The family don't have money. That's, so anyway, oh, they said, mm, we continued driving and they went. But then my father had always been the one that he would loved children. He loved, that's what, no wonder the size of the, fa, um, the compound. Every year, my mom would cook, cook as if she's cooking for England for Christmas. You know, children will pump in, and as they pump in, we must serve them. They must eat. They must, so they love coming. They will leave their parents' food. Maybe they have cooked at home, but they will come to daddy's house. They want to eat daddy's food, you know. So that is how daddy was, you know, and he, he was, um, he was at some point before, just before I was born, my father was the mayor, like the MP of the area where I was before the war, before I was born. So the story I heard from other people, not my dad, was that after the war, after, as soon as I was born, then there was a war. In 1970, the war ended. That after the war, that my father was sending school fees to people, children. They were writing, oh, we, I want to go to school. I'm in so and so school, but mom and dad don't have money for school fees and all that. And dad was giving, sending money to that address to that child and raised a lot of children that way. Then, okay, that was the story told me. But then as I grew older, I just saw um, a number of them come back and was saying the same thing that dad trained them. Dad, I don't know you. He said, yeah, you trained me. You, were, you used to send money to me, you know, school fees and all that. So really, one of them actually put my, dad, my dad's name as, um, is it, uh, what is it called? Uh, one of the founders of a bank, you know. And then he came and brought the paper, 
He said to say thank you. I don't even know you. He said, yeah, yeah, but this is what you did for me. He said, really? I didn't know that anyway. So that was my dad. Only one person came back out of the whole lot to say thank you. Isn't that typical? But that wasn't even looking into that. He wasn't doing that for the thank you or anything. But mom, on the other hand, mom was um, a teacher. She, I know that woman last, a teacher and all through. Oh my goodness, that woman, she, all, the half of her village had taught all of them. So it's like, she's going down the street. Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Oba, that's my father's name, my maiden name. Mrs. Oba, Mrs. Oba, they will run, the children will come running to her. So my parents were like pulling children, magneting children to themselves. So I grew up with children. I'm second to the last, but I grew up with a lot of children. So I'm used to a lot of children and I actually love them. I love them to bits. They thought I was going to spoil my children when I grew up, but obviously I didn't spoil my children. I'm, I love them, but I disciplined them as well. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't spoil them. So, so back to, to round up now. I just want to, all these stories, all this uh, testimony I'm giving, just to encourage somebody to find their gifting and to stick to it. You'll be so happy you did that. Because right now, I am so happy. Everything I'm doing is towards that, um, my gifting. I've started, um, the church blessed me with um, an office. I pay, for, I pay for it, but it's, you can't find, I pay minimal amount for that, that office. If it's somewhere else, I know how much I could be paying. So I, I consider it as a gift to me. And I'm very grateful. So that of um, domiciliary care agency is also going to be sponsoring the orphanage. And I'm hoping from there, and if I get gifts from other people, I'll be able to develop that land as soon as possible so that people will start living, children will start living there. So thank you so much for listening to my stories. And I hope you take on board to find what your giftings are and stick with them. God bless you. Thank you.